Sindhabi School of Design presents Tips from Real Life, a series of conversations that helps you understand the ABCs and the XYZs of design. In this episode, we shall talk to Nishita Kamdar about her design journey from concept to creation. The founder and principal architect of Studio Nishita Kamdar, she completed her bachelor's in architecture from Kamla Reheja, Mumbai. She is currently a visiting faculty at the same school and also the founding partner at Pieces of Desire, which caters to bespoke furniture pieces. Studio Nishita Kamdar is an award-winning multidisciplinary design practice started in Mumbai in 2014. To quote Nishita, architecture should indeed not only look beautiful, but also feel beautiful and appeal to other senses of the human being. We follow an exhaustive but meditative research-driven process of design and draw inspiration from just about anything that pleases us. The studio is engaged in both architectural as well as interior design projects. The very first roadblock that we face as designers is, is when you know when you take up a project is coming up with that first eureka moment of an idea that concept that big thing that driving force um, which is our first kind of test as a designer you know um, in this project you know uh, so i'm just going to start sharing my screen now because uh, we've kind of made a presentation on this and and, and you know i'm going to take you through that uh, just just tell me if you guys can see it Yes, we can um, see the okay, We can see the first slide. Okay, great. So, um, you know, in this particular uh, project, you know, I, uh, there was always this questioning about, you know, what is uh, uh, what is the interior of a space and the confines of a room, and what is, uh, you know, the outside. You know, um, you know, there's this amazing thing about design that it has this ability to create a new social pattern and bring about a change in your day-to-day -day life. Um, and once you see the power of design and what it can do, you'll never be able to unsee it. The project only involved us, you know, um, it, 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 we, all we did was a very simple act of opening up the solid kitchen and dining room walls and replacing them with flexible glass and metal shutters. And this brought about a complete change in the family's behavior with each other. Um, you know, now the wife was no longer confined to a box and a room of the kitchen, but she could in fact be in the kitchen, you know, uh, do all her duties as well as talk to her husband who was in the living room and uh, you know probably even look over her uh, look over the grandparents who were having dinner on the table uh, talk to her son and 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 this for me was you know uh, that big concept and and the big kind of success of the project it, for me that was a big move in the project itself um, so well designed spaces aren't always about aesthetics and taste they shape their ideas about um, you know who we are in the world and what we deserve and this is the opportunity of design. It gives us our most deserved space in this kind of um, world, you know. Um, moving on uh, from an interior project that we had done with a very kind of social concept um, in mind, uh, going to a project that uh, we were commissioned to do in Nagpur, which was uh, designing a set of work tables uh, for an office. Um, again, we're moving from interior to a product scale here, and um, it's it's. It's again like it's a work desk, you know. When we got the project, we we're like, you know, how do we how how do we conceptualize this? As in, you know, it's just a mundane work desk. Um, starting off, uh, you know, you know, inspiration can be from anywhere. There have been buildings that have been inspired by gherkins, uh, by a bird's nest, by flowers, almost anywhere. You can get inspiration from anywhere. For us in this project, the inspiration was. A small little centipede we found crawling on site during our very first visit um, to see the place. Um, you know, it, it you know this tiny little insect with feather-like tiny legs. Uh, it almost looked like someone was trying to run away or rather crawl away from this space. Typically, what we also feel, you know, when we're in an office, we want to just get out of the office, you know, at six o'clock. So, um, so soon this uh, absolutely silly idea became. A concept um, it became um, from the concept it became a sketch and then it developed into a full-blown furniture piece and that's how the centipede table was born the notion of a conventional table with a flat top supported on four legs seemed extremely mundane to us and with this project we tried to break the conventional idea of a work table with a 
with an extremely silly, silly, silly uh, inspiration idea that we you know, just saw on site. Um, and you know, uh, the world of design is, uh, that being said, you know, the world of design is purely human centered, you know, where the focus is always on the user and, and the person who's going to be using the space or the product. And architecture is a form maker, problem solver, and an environment creator. Product design is the very same thing, but at a micro level, where the engagement of the user makes pivotal, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a very important factor while designing product. And therefore, um, no matter what the concept is, you have to make sure that the product is user friendly. Moving on from product design, um, we're talking about uh, you know uh, your ability or, or or your scope of design. Um, restraint in design is a virtue. You know the quality of holding yourself back and implementing something which solves the problem in the simplest possible way. Often we designers get so carried away, um, you know, producing work that is good but losing simplicity and elegance. Um, you know, let's just take the simple example of an iPhone. You know, uh, it's it's the most obvious kind of example. Um, it's obvious because it's so good about you know with its design. You know, um, the iPhone uses the minimal design possible. There is one button, and the whole phone is essentially just one big display, one rectangle and one circle, and that's how simple the arrangement of the entire iPhone is. Um, keeping it simple is always the key. Uh, retail design, again, a place where restraint is absolutely essential. When does the architect draw the line so that the visual design takes a back seat and the focus still remains on the products that are being sold, still ensuring you're telling the brand story through your design? The fashion brand that we designed, uh, the fashion brand Limerick that we designed a store for, identifies itself with inspiration drawn from nature, wildlife, birds, the use of bold colors, prints, patterns, and textures. Their mood board is almost like a whimsical scene from Alice in Wonderland, where the customer being Alice is stepping into a mystical world um, of an enchanted forest through narrow cobbled paths and getting enticed, seeing these beautiful, um, birds, bees, trees around her. Um, and, and this very simple kind of narrative, uh, you know, for us soon became the concept and, 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 and this became the driving force for us and instantly transformed into a design language for us. And, and this always happens, I feel, in an office when you're kind of designing, uh, you know, the idea of concepts, the idea of simplicity, the idea of uh, strong kind of uh, intense only happen when you have the ability to kind of hold back. You have the ability to empathize with your users. You have the ability to listen to the users, critique your own design, make the mistakes and correct them, learn and unlearn and again learn, um, constantly share, work together and collaborate. Is, is, it's, it's just part of this large ecosystem that you know we all grow in. I'd like to end with uh, a lovely quote uh, which says, uh, every, good uh, every good design begins with an even better story. So thank you for listening to mine. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Design Tips from Real Life. Subscribe to the Cinderby School of Design YouTube channel for more such videos. Stay tuned for all the updates on our Instagram page. Cinderby, design your creative future.